And over here at the left-hand side of the map, Metropolis, we have our Red Protoss player from the Team Prime trying to swing things back in their favor. It is the one, the only, Creator. And his opponent on the right-hand side of the map, winner of the last two games in a row, trying to equalize things for Team Liquid, our Purple Terran player, Tasia. Oh, I don't think I've seen a Purple Terran player for a while. That an interesting, interesting hue. It's actually QXC in his uh, in disguise there, it Astasia. Is. He always picks purple, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Yeah. So Creator Prime, one of my favorite Protoss players out right now. I've, I've been a big fan of this guy for a long time, since like early last year. I'm like, watch Creator Prime. He's going to be so good. So now he's kind of come into his own. He's become a very well-respected Protoss versus Terran player and uh, a well-respected player all around right now in the StarCraft II scene. And Prime's going to rely on him to come back and win a game, put them one game away. Uh, Teja has taken out Boom Boom and Anyang, but now we get to like the real you know, meat of the Prime team. We get the really, really tough opponents. Creator, we have Bion, we have Marine Kingdom, of course waiting in the wings, and uh, so things are only going to get harder here from, for Team Liquid. Now, we mentioned it before, but I think it's important to note, Tasia defeated uh, Creator in a long That's best right. of not too long ago in IPL yeah. Fight Club. Creator was actually our reigning champion, and Tasia came in and uh, dispatched of him to take over the tournament. Yep, that's exactly right. Yeah, uh, so Teja, definitely of the caliber of player that can take out Creator Prime. He knows how to, uh, I'm not going to say abuse, but he knows how to kind of work around, we'll say, Creator Prime style. I mean, there's not really a way to sort of abuse the slow, sort of methodical, safe play that we see Creator Prime do, but there's a way to sort of kind of fit into different parts of it, right? I mean, I feel like Teja definitely has a good way of doing it, you know, by going very aggressive with Bio in the early game. Um, I always love to use Polt as an example of a, a great style that's good against what Creator Prime tends to do a lot of the time. You know, yeah. staying very, very heavy on Marine Marauder for much of the game, getting Ghost a little bit later, just really putting a ton of pressure on your opponent and kind of trying to mess up that very uh, steady tech path that Protoss players want to follow. That's right. And it looks like Tasia is going to hide for that uh, One Rack's Castle's fast expand. But of course, as you mentioned, hiding that SEV so we make sure the probe is out of there. And there's always that thing in the back of your head. 90, Creator is 99.9% .9 sure that Tasia just put up a command center right there. Yeah. There'd be no reason to do anything else. But every once in a while, you get that player, uh, his teammate Marine King, for example, that will decide to slap down three more racks instead yeah. and then uh, try and do something ridiculous. Um, on Entombed Valley, at the uh, actually at the GESL I was at the other uh, just a weekend ago or so, Clyde uh, versus Huangsin did a really, really cool build. He actually went for uh, three barracks, and not, we were all thinking all in, because that's generally what it is. Of course. Put some marine pressure on with three barracks before command center, and then expanded, and then went into a normal style of play. And it seems so weird and awkward, but it worked really well, because it just got there so quickly. He actually was able to kill the Nexus. So yeah, I mean, like you mentioned, there's a lot of openings that Protoss players do need to worry about, unless they can confirm for a fact that there is that command center up. And it looks like Creator feels safe enough that he is going to take the uh, the Nexus after one gate. Yeah. And this is no real surprise, um, but it is interesting to note that he's waiting on his uh, ancillary gates here just a little bit. Uh, he's going to wait until about, I don't know, it looks like 33 or 34 supply and then decide to put up those gates afterwards. So. If you put them up in the 20s, you're not feeling secure at all. If you put them up in the 30s, you're feeling pretty safe. So it uh, looks like he's not too worried about any super early pressure from Tasia. And in fact, they're just putting up a third command center. Yeah, I think the bunker at the front really kind of alleviated some of the stress that Creator Prime may have been feeling there. We'll, we'll have to kind of see how he handles it. Tasia continuing to kind of go for that very economically minded style that a lot of players are going. I mean, StarCraft II, people last year were, were like, oh, the players are all playing such long macro games. It's it's so crazy how greedy they are. But yeah. man, we thought that was greedy. Look at how it is now. Oh, well, speaking of greedy, that stalker was like, yeah, I want to see I what's like going on. That's smart, though, because, oh, I oh, thought he saw no. it. I thought He's he saw so it. close. He, he got about one yeah. hex away. Man, because I was about to say that was actually a really good sacrifice by Creator Prime to uh, lose some of the health on that stalker to get in there and scout. He did see the second command center, so that does still give him some valuable information. But um, yeah, I think that was a good idea by Creator Prime, but unfortunately just didn't see the command center. Now, Creator Prime is going to still be oh. Creator Prime. Of course, he's going to produce a good number of observers. He's decided to go robo actually before more gateways. So yep. even though he didn't see a third command center and he may be worried about some sort of a two-base timing, um, looks like he's still going to get in and see some good information out of Tasha. 
Yeah, I mean, it's always good to get a, that Observer out as soon as possible. Uh, most Protoss players lately have been getting three gates before the Observer just because Terran's been, you know, once again putting more pressure on early on. But Creator Prime identifying correctly this time that he can go ahead and, and go for that a little bit quicker. Two yeah. Forges as well, so straight up Creator Prime style here. That's right. His creator -iest. Creatorius, creatorist. But it is yeah. though. I mean, double, uh, double observer, double forge. He's playing his style to a hilt. We'll see uh, robotics bay here in just a bit, and then he'll end up throwing down a few more gateways. And uh, you know, maybe a third base before an attack or after attack doesn't really matter. We'll see a third out of him before he decides to and move in. Tage is a little bit worried about an attack. Man, three bunkers already. He's very paranoid at this point. But when you're going for that fast third command center, you know why not? Oh, good catch. Yep, does get the observer. Really well done there. And I, I don't think Creator Prime's seen that third base yet. I don't either. Uh, let's take a look at his vision. Nope. He's going to see it here in a bit because he's yep. going up and around the side. But still, that's that's uh, a lot of time to be uh, to be denied that information because now all he sees is a completed orbital command. He's yeah. got to think, well, how long's that been up? So, so right now, um, what Teja can do is kind of get that big bio force going that he really wants to. He's going for relatively quick medevacs as well, so he'll be able to do that very typical two medevac push later on. He's going to have stim, he's going to have plus one, he's going to have all those good basic upgrades, and uh, Creator Prime oh, is good. probably going... Yeah, catching another one. He's probably going to have less units, obviously, because of this style, but his units are going to be a little bit stronger. They're going to have 1-1, one, one, and uh, possibly even 2-2, two, two, depending on the timing, whereas Tage is going to have less in the upgrades department. So Creator Prime kind of relying on quality over quantity. But it's another situation where I feel like at this point in TVP, things are just so even between both races right now. It, it really does come down to unit control in most situations. And yeah, Creator, as soon as he saw that third base, by the way, sent down a probe to put up a third nexus of his own. So uh, wants to make sure that he's going to keep up in macro. He's yep. down on workers to his opponent. Of course, Tasia's going to have a lot better economy once he's able to saturate this next base. That being said, though, Creator has all those advantages you were talking about going for him, though. Mm -hmm. He's got his Twilight Council just about to finish up, but just right in time so he can start his 2-2 as soon as he needs to. His robotic space on the way, so he's going to have very powerful units at the same time. He's going to be on six gateways. So everything's looking very standard, but still very clean and very efficient from Creator. Yeah, so much Protoss play right now really relies on having that very passive early game getting your upgrades going and then having that very strong late game. I mean, if you look right now, our Terran player does have the supply advantage and you oftentimes see a big supply advantage in a Zerg versus Protoss as well. And Protoss players just kind of are dealing with it. They're like, alright, we know we're not going to have as many units out but that doesn't matter. That's just not the style that Protoss play with right now. And, and so far it's working really well. So we'll have to see if Creator Prime can defend this push. This is very common Two medevac push. Oh, and the observer does see it coming, so that's going to help Creator Prime a little bit. That's right. Oh, so oh. this is always the moment when it's a little bit risky for Protoss players, yeah. and we'll see if Creator Prime's able to defend. Uh, not many units out for him. Seven zealots, one immortal. That is about it. Look at that. Scans picks off another observer. Tasha just three for three on those, really on top of his uh, spotting. Yeah. Now, uh, with this type of push, you usually just go straight across the map. You usually don't stop like that. So I wonder kind of what Teju was thinking at that point. He knows the Observer did see him. Looks like he was waiting for another couple medevacs to come and join the army. But I feel like he's kind of missed his timing window, honestly, at this point. There's still not a lot of, uh, well, there's not a lot of gateway units out. Actually, I kind of, I know I said the armies are smaller, but I expected there to be a few more gateway units for Creator Prime than this. Uh-oh. That's oh, right. Oh, Creator Prime. He's going to try and You might be in trouble here. Let's see. It's it's a matter of how well he can get to that there Colossus. There's the reinforcements yeah. of uh, gateway That'll units. Help. And, yep, Tasha says, not going to deal with that for the moment. If he gets Creator to overcommit and drop the Colossus forward, he may fall back and try and pick it off. But, I mean, that's yeah. about the best he can hope for. Uh, to a certain extent, Protoss kind of operates like Zerg in, in these types of situations where you don't make units, you don't make units. You know, you spend your Chrono Boost on upgrades, on buildings, on tech, and then it's like, oh, no, an attack is coming suddenly switch to chrono boosting on units out of your gateway get that big swell of offensive units and then hold off attacks like that so it's uh it's kind of a, a very different way to play yeah uh then the other race is really like i said it's most similar to zerg and kind of a loose sort of a way but creator prime you know did it perfectly there he knew exactly when to make units and exactly when to use his chrono boost on uh, something else that's right um now 
He's investing into his tech infrastructure at the moment. As we can see, it's 13 minutes in the game. He's got 3-3 three, three coming up, extended thermal lance. His Templar Archives is almost finished, and Charge is, the, is there as well. So yep. he's got a smattering of upgrades, but he's still only working off of six gates, despite yet having uh, 69 probes on three bases. There we go, finally reinvesting back into those. But that was the only thing I was worried about, was his ability to churn out units in the event of an engagement. But now, mm. looks like he's going to take care of that and go up to that very common 10 gates off of three base. Yeah, I mean, I feel... Honestly, I feel like, uh, obviously, Tade just still has a, a perfectly fine chance of winning, but I feel like, to a certain extent, he's kind of playing into Creator's hands a little bit. Creator wants this. He wants his opponent to sit back and not attack. And Tejo right now, he's not dropping. He's not doing anything. He's just waiting until he has that big, powerful Bioforce to move in to just crush the army of his opponent. And that can work quite a bit, but... You know, sometimes if this type of attack doesn't work, then you can, you're going to wish you would have dropped. But, oh, man. Oh, the army for Creator Prime. Oh, my God. So far out of position. That I, is devastating. Oh, I can't believe this And Tasha being so patient. He's not wow. stimming in. He's waiting for the perfect moment and then stims up when the rest of the army is near. Creator just kind of filtering with a few units. He even hit before 3-3 was finished up. So the upgrade disparity is much less than it would have been. In fact, he's only one upgrade down. He's already killed one base. He's heading to a second. Oh, man. He's going to focus down that. Nexus, and I think he's going to get it. Oh, he's not focusing it down. Yeah, he needs to pick those units up and get out of here right now. He's actually just going to sacrifice them, I guess, but yeah. he's got such a high amount of production at home that he can afford to do that. Killing that Nexus, certainly helpful there. He is at a bit of a dis uh, supply disadvantage. We'll see if Creator Prime wants to take advantage of that and do a counterattack, but... Man, what a risky move by Teja. We'll have to see if it pays off. That's right. Take that uh, 15 supply and workers out of the equation as well. And you see the creators up by almost 20 supply and pure army. And it's a yeah. very valuable army as well because in about uh, 20 seconds, even less than that now, it's being Chrono boosted. He's going to be on 3-3 three, three upgrades. Mm -hmm. Like we said, we already saw the Templar Archives down. And he's moving up to a fourth base. Now, this is going to allow Teja a little bit of an opportunity to reproduce his army and move out in style. As we can see, his economy is great. He's making a ton of units all at once. Six Marauders six Marines, three Vikings, all at the same time. Yeah, and Crater Prime deciding not to take advantage of that uh, that fight that he won, even though he did lose the Nexus, and uh, just kind of poking with the Stalkers just a little bit there. Yeah, once they get a stim, but it doesn't look like uh, Tejo's going to bite on yep. it. So uh, we saw that great patience out of him whenever he took out this natural. So uh, and when Creator said he was going up to his fourth, that's his fourth location, but of course he is only on three Nexuses. He did lose this one along with the Critical Templar tech in the middle of the map. Yeah, and, uh, oh, that uh, Twilight Council as well. So I don't know yep. if he's restarted that. No, um, he doesn't really need. Does his, do his, well, if he wants to go back up charge? to Templar, so that's that's true. But I think we're gonna I think we're gonna see him switch over and just kind of stay Colossus heavy for now. But yeah, I, I feel like Creator, yeah, his, his build is a little bit confused here. He doesn't quite seem to know what he wants to do at this point. And uh, Tasha's now put on a pretty impressive amount of Vikings as well. Oh, and here oh, we go. No, oh, the Colossi. Oh, my God. Oh. He loses three right away. That may be the game oh, right there. As the fourth Colossus is going to fall. And there's nothing oh, that opposing is the this game. giant bio army. Oh, a huge misstep there out of Creator. He's going to lose all of his Colossi. Oh, Five man. of them have fallen. He's now at a 50 supply deficit yeah, and falling. That was most definitely the game. GG. And Creator Prime with a huge error loses the game to Liquid Tasia. I mean, Tasia did a good job of being in the right place at the right time that game.